Jean Yang. I'm the National Ambassador for Young People's Literature. And today I have with me one of my favorite people in the whole world, Derek Kirk Kim. Derek and I are uh, good friends. We also worked on a book together. We did Eternal Smile from First Second Books. And now Derek is actually the lead character designer on Adventure Time, season six and seven. Did I get that right? Yeah, that's right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, yeah, of course, Gene. Well, first, I want to talk to you a little bit about your job. Mm -hmm. So, is it awesome to be the lead character designer on a show like Adventure Time? That's awful. No, it is <laughs> amazing. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's like a dream job, for sure. Um, especially to be on a cartoon that's so beloved by so many kids. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, it just definitely changes your life in, like... Yeah, it is, it's an amazing job. What can I say? <laughs> can, I say? can you tell us what your like every day is like? So basically, as a lead character designer, um, you basically have to break down whatever uh, costumes, characters, props, and effects have to be designed for a particular episode. So we have a meeting where we go through what's called the storyboard, which is um, you know it's like a template for the whole episode, and then we go through the entire episode, every panel, and we have to pick out what needs to be designed if something hasn't been designed yet. So if Finn has like a new hat in one episode, or Jake transforms into something we haven't seen him do before, then we have to mark all those, and then um, and then I divide the uh, the designs that have to be designed between me and the two other designers. And um, so that's basically my my one of the days of the week, and then the rest of the week we're doing the actual drawing. So what's the hardest thing that you've ever had to design? Who the hardest? Um, I personally didn't have to design this, but one of the designers had to do a crystal egg. And it had facets that were symmetrical, you know. So wow. you can imagine how hard. I don't know how hard it's gonna be for Korea to animate it, to because that's a break apart. But that was like a really hard one. Um, but you didn't have to do that. You gave that job to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> they asked for it. They begged me for All right. it. All right. No, they didn't. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Joy. <laughs> uh, What's the funnest thing that you've had to design? One of my favorite things, it was a very minor thing, but um, in a flashback sequence in a recent eight-part Marceline thing we did called Stakes, uh, as an eight-part series, um, there's a, there's, Marceline has a flashback where she sees her life when she's an old lady, and her and Princess Bubblegum actually live together in this house. And uh, Princess Bubblegum in the storyboard actually had a, um, like a quick sketch of like a kimono sort of outfit, but I, I, I made it like a kimono slash korean hanbok which is like the korean dress oh, okay. hybrid okay. nice and that was really fun it was only one quick scene uh -huh. but it was so fun to be able to incorporate some of my cultural heritage into yeah. it and um and to make something new with it which is really fun yeah. so you're korean american korean american hanboks are part of what you grew up with yeah yeah every korean woman has yeah. a hanbok my mom has a hanbok and now you got to stick it in a show that's seen by millions of people yeah yeah that's pretty that's awesome pretty, and in korea because it's translated in korea yeah wow yeah. that's great so they would totally recognize it oh for sure for yeah. sure i'm, I'm awesome. hoping like i did it for them you know, so <laughs> i hope the korean fans like it that's know. cool that's yeah. really cool now I know I know just from being your friend that you love books and you grew up reading books. What kind of books uh, most affected you when you were a kid? Well, I, I loved um, I loved a lot of comics, uh -huh. obviously because I'm a, I was a, I'm a cartoonist, and um, one of my favorites was Bone by Jeff Smith, which I'm sure you yeah, know Bone is about. great. Yeah, Bone yeah. is great. But but when we were younger, we read it in black and white. That's right. right? That's right. And now, we didn't have color back then. That's yeah. how old we are. <laughs> yeah, the whole world was just black and white, <laughs> yeah, yeah. including Jeff Smith's Bone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You guys don't know how lucky you are that you read it in color. <laughs> what do you like about Bone? Oh my gosh, what's not to like? Um, first off, the art was beautiful. It was mm -hmm. uh, Walt Kelly inspired. He did Pogo. Uh, I was a huge fantasy fan when I was a kid. I loved anything fantastical, like Lord of the Rings style fantasy. <laughs> And to see that kind of epic fantasy in a comic, I've never really seen that before. I mean, there were other comics like it around, but I didn't know about them. And Bone was the first one that was like a really long epic comic that continued, you know, issue to issue, unlike super comics, which end with every yeah. episode. And uh, that was like, to me, really amazing. And the characters were so great. You know, Bone. Yeah, the characters Bone. are so good, yeah. right? And, uh, they're funny and they're yeah. real. And they feel like real brothers. Yeah, they really do. Yeah, we both are bro have younger brothers. Yeah. So it was like, it really felt like. Yeah, yeah like when they argue and then when exactly. they make up, it totally felt real. Totally, totally. So great. Yeah. Uh, any other books? Uh, I also love another fantasy series called Elf Quest. 
uh, by Wendy Penny, uh, written Richard Penny. Um, I also love the Book of Three series, speaking of fantasy. Yeah, Book of yeah. Three is amazing. Book of Three is an amazing by, series. Uh, uh, Lloyd Alexander. Yes, thank you. And I uh, highly recommend that one if you like fantasy. Um, so you're big in the fantasy literature. I, I was all about the fantasy. Okay. Yeah, I was <laughs> all about superhero comics at first, and then I got really heavily into fantasy. Okay. So my comics reading was mostly superheroes, but then when I read started reading prose, I got really into uh, into fantasy. Yeah. And one of the ones that one of my favorites is the Xanth series by Piers Anthony. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I've read a few of those. Yeah, and it's really great world where every person has a magical power, which is I think something every kid could fantasize about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's a really fun series. A lot of puns. Like, there's a lot of puns <laughs> in it, which is really fun too for kids. Yeah, it's a it's a goofy set of books. Yeah, right. yeah, it's yeah. great. But there's a book called um, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith, and uh, it's it's about a it's an immigrant story about a girl, an Irish girl, who comes to America when she's a kid with her family. Okay. And basically, it's just following her life through just growing up in um, poor, poor Brooklyn at the time. And uh, it not only is it a great book, but I can kind of, you know, uh, relate, relate to it. it. Yeah, yeah, because I'm an immigrant yeah. myself. I came yeah. when I was eight. So. And it showed me that, uh, you know, books could be more than just, you know, escapism. You yeah. Know? Nothing wrong with that, but, you know, it can really reach you in, in the deepest depths of your cockles, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that book sounds like it's, it's kind of outside the walls, that it's not necessarily something you gravitated towards. No. Really. I, you know how I found it? I, I found one of our other books called Joy in the Morning. In, in um, a summer, uh, my parents took us to a cabin on a lake. And because I was such a nerd, I didn't want to do anything outside, like uh -huh. actually play in the lake. <laughs> I just wanted to stay in, my, in the cabin to read. And the people who owned the cabin had a bookshelf. This was, I think, when I was in... Um, like maybe sophomore in high school or something, uh -huh. somewhere in high school, and um, they had a bookshelf, and uh, I just wanted to read, so I just pulled this book off the shelf with a really nice cover, and um, uh, it, it moved me so much that when I got home, I, I found, her, found out uh, that she had another really famous book called Tree Grows in Brooklyn, and I read that, and it really moved me, and um, that's when I really discovered like straightforward fiction, as yeah, opposed to like, yeah, fantasy yeah. fiction. Yeah, but it's totally by accident. I, yeah, it that's great. Was, that's great. Yeah. Well, it's because you're brave enough to read something that didn't look like was maybe meant for you or wasn't similar to the exactly. books that you read before. Right? Exactly, you're reading exactly. books different from what you normally read. Yeah. The comics that were also like that too. Mm -hmm. It was totally by accident. I was at a mall. And uh, they, a, a comic store was going out of sale, uh, out of business. Okay. So they had all their comics in the middle aisle of a mall for a quarter each. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And, and what did you find? And I found a, you find a, a Peter quarter? Bag comic, uh, who's not for kids, but his <laughs> comics are amazing. And, and they, it, it made me realize there's more to comics than just fantastical stories. Yeah. 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 So. so what are you reading now? Well, right now, I can... I can tell you uh, straight from my phone because I read uh, on my phone now. Okay. Like everybody in the Nothing wrong with that. I'm yeah. not judging that. <laughs> yeah. I love reading on my phone actually. It's great. Um, so I've been reading a book right now. I'm reading a book right now called uh, To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. And uh, so far it's really good. Uh, I'm That's really great. into it. Yeah. Um, She's a great author. Yeah, was, her voice is very real. Like it just yeah, feels like somebody yeah. talking to you, yeah. uh, which is fantastic. And um, it's about uh, two sisters and kind of like their dynamic uh -huh. together. Well, it's about three sisters, but I think it's mainly about the two. And um, there's a boy involved. <laughs> I, it got me with the opening page, which was um, she talks about how she collects love letters, but the love letters aren't to her. It's love letters that she writes to boys that she wants to get over. Oh. How can you not keep reading, yeah, right? That sounds like amazing. Didn't, that kind of sounds like something. Didn't, didn't you do something like that? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, also, uh, I recently just finished reading Boy Proof by Ciso Castellucci. Another wonderful author. Yeah, right. yeah. And it was a fantastic... I couldn't stop reading it. I read it like straight, like through. Wow. And I was, um, I'm actually friends with Cecil and I was texting her as I was reading it. But like, this is amazing. Like, I can't wait to get to the next. Yeah, like it was really like a huge yeah. page turner. So, so Boy Proof and, and uh, Jenny Han's book, No Boys on the Cover, that just goes to prove that you can be a man as manly as Derek Kirkin <laughs> and read a book. That's right. Read a book with girls on the cover. Right, right. That's great. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I, I highly recommend all those books. Yeah, totally. All right, well, Derek, thanks so much for sitting down with me and sure. talking about this sure. for all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no great to talk to you. Yeah, great to talk to you. All right, man. <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much for joining us here at the uh, Reading Without Walls podcast. Hope to see you next time.